All right, so real quickly, I'd like to talk about music libraries. It seems like depending on the size of your library, it seems like there would be a different type of way to categorize your music. So let's start with a, a, a smaller group. Um, my, uh, my, uh, my, men's, uh, my male quintet, we sing about once a month, which means that I need about 12 songs per year, right? And we try not to repeat our songs for a couple years. So if I had 24 songs, I would have a, a, a pretty manageable library. However, it's kind of nice, depending on where you are in the month, like if I'm July 4th, it'd be nice to have a patriotic song. But if I'm July uh, 28th, maybe I wouldn't necessarily need a patriotic song. <laughs> People have had, a, had enough patriotic songs. So for that reason, it'd be, it'd be nice to, at Thanksgiving, if I'm toward the end of November, it'd, nice to, it'd be nice to have a Great Is Thy Faithfulness type song. If I'm early Thanksgiving, so depending on where you are, it's nice to have more than 24 songs. But if I had um, 36 songs, and, and then sometimes what happens is you sing a song and you go, that, that song didn't really fit my group. Uh, maybe, maybe the harmonies were too difficult for our group as, as a whole to hear, or maybe the range was too big for my group. The, we, we, we can't hit those low notes. Or maybe there's like, oh, you know, there, there, there's some sky high men's parts. So a lot of times I'll take that music and pass it along to a group that that music would fit a little bit better. Like this group has, has a more, more high range. This, this group has more low range. And, uh, or, or this group, uh, a certain speed of song, like, like, uh, Barbershop, barbershop quartet style of music. Maybe it's really good for us, but maybe not this. And so you kind of pass the music around to the groups. If I have about 36 songs, that's, that's fine for my group. So what I do is uh, um, I, 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 I put those songs, like I said, I'll, uh, I just have a spot on my computer where I just say, okay, here it's at, let's say 2014, and I centered on the sheet of paper. So here's the sheet of paper, 2014, and then I just have boxes like this, something like this all the way down. And uh, I'll just say, okay, in January, we sang this. In February, we sang this. In March, we sang this. And when I get down to, and, and I'll just kind of roll my way down. And then what's nice, I, I, I just go into the font and I just put a strike through if I, if I use it. So I get down to 2016, okay? And I'm looking for something to sing in January. Basically what I'll do is I, I, don't, I don't want to use something for a couple years. Um, just, just to have a nice variety. And there's, there's plenty of good music out there. And uh, so what I'll do is, is I'll look back, well, okay, 2015, 2014, or earlier, uh, I'll say, okay, well, it, back here I sang like January, uh, January 2nd, and maybe we still did a Christmas song, maybe not normally, normally you're done with Christmas by, by, by New Year's, but maybe it was early enough January that we did something Christmassy, um, whereas this is going to be later January. So I'm like, uh, I don't want to do the one from January, so maybe I'll look. I'll look back and I'll look, my, um, I'll look into 2013 a little bit. So here's, you know, up here, maybe here's uh, the, the 2013. Uh, let's see. So here, here's my list of everything in 2013. And I go back to uh, September or something like that, and I'll be like, oh, look at that. I think this one, we sang a Sunday evening in September of 2013, and we're singing a Sunday evening here. I like that song. So what I would do, whatever, whatever the, oh, I'll put September over here, September. Whatever that song was, um, I'll just select it, and I'll, I'll go into font, and I'll put strike through. And then what it does is it just puts a line through it, but I can see it's there, but I used it as I'm looking back. 
So there's a line through it, and, I, and then I put it here, and I sing it. My library is small enough for this that I just use this little accordion file. I don't really need to, with 36 songs, I'm not going to lose track of them. You know what I mean? So in here, I, I don't even alphabetize it because I can find really fast what I'm looking for. Okay? I, just, I could alphabetize this, but I've, I've never had... I've been doing quintet for years, and I can find what I need to really quickly. Um, so I, I have it. I just have I have about thirty six songs in here that I can pull things out depending on you know where it is. If it's going to be a Thursday evening, a Sunday morning, a, a Sunday evening, or whatever. September is is kind of around our stewardship time. Uh, if it's fall push or if we're leading up to a, a, a soul winning campaign time, you, you look at that and say, oh, I w there, was a, there was an urge to win souls or something like that. You just look and you pray and you say, well, I have all these songs. I don't want to go back to last year. I want to go back a couple years, but I can go back earlier if I need to. Pull that song down. Or if you keep your eyes and ears open, you find new music along the way. And you go, oh, I, I want to try this. I think that would be a lot of fun. So you're slipping new music in there kind of uh, getting the music that fits your group. Does that make sense? So depending on the size of your group, um, just, just, a, just an accordion file like this can be absolutely fine and, ju and just set in there and have it named. And so you can just go in there and, uh, all right, uh, uh, oh, worship the king back here. All right, pull this out. All right, everybody, we're going to start working on oh, worship the king. Uh, they have us down to sing for such and such next month. So let's start working on this because I really feel like this would be a good song for kind of tell the guys why you want to use that song. So this is, for a library like that, I think this would be perfectly fine. Now, if... If the library is bigger, you want to alphabetize. Okay? And I'm talking like in the case of my high school choir. So my high school choir, for them, I would like to teach them new songs every year. I would, I would just like to have that fun. And, and we don't have to. You can pull out a favorite. But, okay, they're at 7th grade, 8th grade, 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. So a 7th a, a, a grader who comes in, I'd kind of like him to learn new music all year. Because we're not hitting a ton of music. So I don't want to, every two years, pull out the same music. So I, my goal for them, you know, depending on what, what it is, my goal for them is to have a, a six-year rotation with pulling out a favorite maybe here and there. But a six-year rotation, because they're not going to sing a ton. Um, and in fact, uh, right now, they, they have one music hour on Monday, then they have 20 minutes on Tuesday, 20 minutes on Friday, then the rest of the music hour is orchestra. So they want, they want to look at some new stuff. And I spend a lot of the time on vocal warm-ups right now and other things, um, but, but basically I, six years. And so six years of music, I, I want that alphabetized. So I'm not going to use an accordion file because it kind of gets irritating to alphabetize that. Because again, let's say I get a new piece of music and it goes here. Well, then I have to move everything back a slot to put it here, alph alphabetized. You know what I mean? But with a hanging file, that's simple. You just and put it in, right? That it just a hanging file. Um, that it's wonderful to alphabetize that. For a while, that library was kind of small enough that we had old. Uh, uh, a shelving system with, with slots in it. That, you know, one, two, three, four, for old, uh, old place where people kept their choir books. So, it, so we'd have slots one through 25 filled. And, oh, we got a new piece of music. Uh, and then you'd say, oh, well, is it a, uh, and then you, you oh, okay, well, that, that letter name, it needs to go in slot number 13 for, to alphabetize. So slots 14 through 25 had to be moved down a slot. Okay? Um, well, hanging file, it's, it's not like that. We, uh, a while ago, um, we had somebody go through and kind of take us out of those slots and actually they gave us some spots in a hanging file and that's so much better. You pull out a drawer <laughs> and there's a hanging file there. There's a couple drawers. 
So if this alphabetized goes here, you just slide them apart. However, then the third style of keeping a library is it, it's not um, that easy to uh, alphabetize everything. I, I think it becomes a problem if your library gets too big to alphabetize everything. The church choir, um, we sing every service except for Thursday night, right? Um, so we sing every Thursday and we have a, we have, we have a very large uh, system. So what we do is we file numerically by acquisition. We file numerically by acquisition. What that means is you get a song and it becomes the next number. So I, I brought a couple of these. Let's say we had 214 songs in our library. And then the choir director says, um, let's, <laughs> that's funny. I don't even know if you've sung this, but uh, I hear a voice of praying. I hear a voice of praying. And he passes this out. Here's our new piece of music. And uh, he passes it out. We sing, I hear a voice of praying. And you say, well, I, alphabetically, this should go in the eyes. Um, well, our library is so big that we, we gave them all numbers. It's like, well, restamp all the music. You know, unstamp that music and then change all the boxes and, and put it all in there. Um, no, what we do is we just make it 215. This is now 215. But we use, we use uh, computer programs to alphabetize it. So basically, we put I here in, in the computer program. It alphabetizes them and then it tells me where it's found. 215. Does that make sense? Because it actually, the, the library is so big that it doesn't make sense to, 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 to I get this new one and then, and then sh shift the whole library around to put this music in with the eyes. So we don't. It's, it's, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's, it's filed numerically by acquisition when we acquire it. And then, of course, we use Excel. So, okay, there we go. I, I, I hear a voice of praying. And so that's fun. We had fun with that. And we sing some of our other songs. And then the next year, or whatever, the, the choir director says, I got some new music. Um, here is, uh, uh, I am bound for the kingdom. I am bound for the kingdom. And so this is also in the eyes. Um, and then the next year, wonderful grace is not in the eyes. And the next year, uh, um, how great thou art. You think we should, we, honestly, we should buy things alphabetically. Uh, we should only buy things the first year of a church that starts with A. And then probably the second year of the church, we should only buy choir music that starts with B. And then the third year of the church only use, and then after 26 years, um, honestly, you just got to stop. <laughs> Maybe we can find music that starts with numbers or something, you know, so... <laughs> So no, so here we have uh, Wonderful Grace is 218. So we have uh, 218 here. And he goes, oh, let's pass this out. We've got some choir music. Um, this is Wonderful Grace Medley. Wonderful Grace. Instead of finding a way to stick this in with the W's, we, we just make this 218. We just add it to the end of our library. Then we put Wonderful Grace and we add, add the information, the publisher's Lilness Publishing, we add the publisher's information into the computer. The computer switch, you know, alphabetizes all of it. Then when I see, and then you have your system in there for when do I use it? And uh, when, should, when, when, when should I use this the next time? So I'm not overusing it. I'm using it just the right amount of time. Because choir music is going to be the same way. You have some choir music you want to pull out more often than others. And then you have some music that... Uh, that you reserve for certain types of things. Maybe you're going to go more heavy on a patriotic time or something like that. So um, here we go with uh, 218, Wonderful Grace. Um, it just goes right after 217 and right before 219. And then you don't have to alphabetize it. Uh, you do that in the, in the software. Wonderful Grace of Jesus. You click it, you look over, there it is, 218. You tell your librarian, um, go get 218 for us. We're going to sing that song. Um, and then she can go instantly. She can bring it, pop off the lid, start pass that out to the choir. You're ready to go. It's very... So, you, so a library, I think, gets so big that to alphabetize the whole library is, uh, is, is uh, ineffectual. 
it, it'd be better just to, and then basically what, what Mr. Brady does is he, he actually, so she doesn't have to have the computer either, he actually just prints out the list and staples it. And then that list is alphabetical. Then you, then you can see where the numbers are. So once again, I, I think a library can be small enough that you don't have to alphabetize. Um, you're going to sing, you know, something like this. And uh, sorry, this is kind of a kind of messy, but but something like this. And of course, I would have uh, 2013 January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. And if we didn't sing for some reason, I would put that probably in there. July, uh, my group wasn't down to sing or whatever. 2014, January, February, March, and then what we did, 2015, and then pretty soon you get up there and they're, they're crossed out. And it's up to you if you want to keep previous years, how far back you want to go, you can always just get rid of 2008 or whatever. Just can't, you know, you know just delete, delete the table. But why? I mean, I mean, why would you have to? You can just roll down and, uh, and then you, as, you, as you fill in, you can see what you've done for years. Um, by the way, sometimes upstairs you'll get a book. Sometimes you get a book of music that has several songs in it. So I'll show you where some of those things are too. And then those books are stamped. They have a number on them. Uh, each book has a, has a number on it. So, uh, so you'll be able to find those as well. Uh, so so the, 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 those libraries are separate from these. We don't have the books uh, mixed in with our octavos. Octavos, we have them in a separate place, but it's a good system. So I, I would say really there's three ways to organize your, your music. Uh, a small enough way where you can just put it in a little accordion file uh, in the middle where you should alphabetize with a hanging file. But this, is, this, this, this system is, there, there, we have the church choir has enough music that we just put them in these boxes and just put them on shelves numerically, filed numerically by acquisition. So it all depends on the size of your library. Any questions? Yes, sir. With your, when you use the computer to organize it, then you just put down the date that you sing it last, and then... Yeah, um, I don't know Mr. Brady's particular system for, uh, for how he uses it, but yes, you would have a way to record when you used it, and you would have a way to, I, 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 would, I would say similar to what we would do with the hymnal, Here's, here's music that I want to use ever, you know, this often. Here's music I want to use a little less often. Um, favorites, rotate through this. Um, and then you could do different pages on Excel too with uh, like Christmas music. Um, I suppose you could even do Christmas music, even years, Christmas music, odd years or, or, or whatever. Have a rotation of Christmas music where you have year one, year two, year three, maybe year four, you go back to the page of Christmas music from whatever, depending on how organized you want to be. And I know that those are powerful programs. Basically, they're only limited by your know-how of, of telling it what you want it to do. They're so powerful, those programs. So basically, yeah, you'd write down when you used it, when you want to use it again, uh, and you can see which ones you haven't used that often. I imagine there's even ways to have it show, you know, uh, filter, Maybe that would be more access, but depending on how you knew those programs, filter by which ones I've only used three times, something like that. You, you, there's a way to get all that, that stuff to do that stuff. But, um, but yeah, that's essentially what you do.